All right, hi, you're 11s. This is Mr. Lim here, and we are going to do a couple of calculations on some relative atomic mass. So let's get started. Um, so we're going to be determining a whole bunch of stuff, doing maths in chemistry. So last uh, video, we talked about the mass spectrometer and the detector, which detects the stream of isotopes uh, that go into it and uh, can tell you how many impacts or how many of the each different isotopes there are. Uh, so it displays this information in a graphical form, okay? And this graphical form is two types. There's an absolute amount and then there's a relative amount, okay? So they sh the absolute amount shows how many impacts. The relative amount takes that total number of impacts and then does the maths for you and then turns it into a percentage, all right? If you have a uh, absolute amount, right, you need to convert it to a relative amount. You don't actually, but it's always good to do a story because it's good maths, right? So here is a typical uh, a example of one where they use an absolute value. Okay. So one way is to tell that it's an absolute value is A, it'll tell you somewhere on the scale. Alternatively, if these numbers here don't add up to 100, it's an absolute scale. Okay, so these are ones. They don't add up to 100. Let's find out what it does add up to, all right? Um, so it's 38 plus 12 plus 24 plus 10, which happens to be 84, okay? Um, we're going to be learning how to use our calculators really efficiently, and we're going to learn how to store numbers. So I'm going to show that to you in class, but I'm going to store that as the letter A, all right? Then what I do is I find the percentage of each. So 38 divided by 84 times 100, which effectively will be 38 divided by the saved letter A times 100 is going to be 45, 40, 45.2 percent, okay? And we're gonna save that value as B because we're gonna to need to get the exact values um, instead of just the rounded values, okay? Uh, so the next one is uh, 12 over 84 or 12 over A times 100. Okay, so 12 divided by A times 100 is 14.3% and that I'm going to save under C, right? Then uh, the next one is 24 divided by A times 100, which is 28.6%. Well, actually, it's 0.57, and I'm going to store that under D. And then I'm going to do the last one, 10 divided by A times 100, store it under, that equals to 11.9%, and I'm going to store that under E. Okay, so these are my values there that I have taken from an absolute value to a uh, relative value, which being a percentage value. All right, so... That's uh, that graphical representation of the mass spectrogram. Okay, let's move on. Okay, from the graphical representation, you will then be able to use the percentage distribution. That's the one that we've just worked out of each isotope and then use it to determine the relative atomic mass. The relative atomic mass, again, is the weighted average of each element. That means that the percentage of each isotope affects the average of the element. Okay, so if there's more of one particular isotope, the average of the two uh, is going to be weighted towards that one which has more of it. Okay, so to determine the relative atomic mass, we're going to use the following formula, which is shown here. Okay, so if you're not familiar with this symbol here, it means the sum of. Okay, so the sum of the isotopic abundances, which means their percentage, uh, times the isotope mass number, divided by the isotope abundance, which is effectively 100, which is... Um, uh, the total percentages. All right, so here's that example that we did earlier with those percentages saved under the letters B, C, D, and E. Okay, so how do we do this calculation? Okay, so it is isotope abundance times isotopic mass number. Now, the mass number might actually not be uh, what you're given. You might be given the... Um, mass number as well as the relative atomic mass in AMU as an accurate value, okay? Which will mean be slightly, it'll be close to that value, but it'll be slightly off, okay? So, the RAM is equal to, let's just 
just move that across to the side and maybe make that a bit smaller. All right, the RAM is equal to 45.2, which is B, times 54. Okay, then put that in brackets. And so we want the sum of all of these percentages times the relative atomic mass. So then we do the next one, 14.3, which is saved as C on our calculators, times by 55, plus uh, 28.6 times 56, and uh, bracket 11.9 times 57. Okay, now it is really important to use brackets uh, appropriately when doing this calculation, otherwise you are gonna screw it up. So make sure you know how to use your brackets and make sure you put every single one in. And remember the sum of these isotope abundances is gonna be 100. Okay, so you do that in your calculator. We do B times uh, B, which is that times 54, okay? Which happens to be 2442. Uh, well, that's going to be 9. Okay. And I'm going to save that as B. Okay. So I'm going to rewrite, overwrite that number. Uh, then I'm going to do 14.3 times, or C. Oops, I should do C. C times 55 which would be equal to 70 or 7 point, oh, that's not right, uh, 785, 785.7, right? And I'm gonna uh, save that as, what is that? That's not right. C, which is, whoops. Oh no, I did that wrong. Okay, well, I'm just going to use the thing. All right, 14 like that. Yeah, 785.7. Uh, so C times 10. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to save that as C again. Okay, so, oh. so C. All right, then I'm going to do the next one, which is D uh, times 56, which is 1600 exactly, which is convenient. All right. And we're going to save that as D, right, so store D, and then uh, E times 57 is 678.6, which I'm going to save as E again, right, Let's store E, right, and then I'm going to divide that all by 100. And then I'm just gonna put that into the calculator as B plus C plus D plus E divided by 100. And that equals 55.07 AMU. Okay, so that's how you would do that. Now, if you're confident with how to use your calculator, you can skip a lot of these steps, especially if you've saved the numbers. You could just do, you could just effectively do B times 54 in brackets, C times 55, uh, D times 56, and E times 57, and then do it all over 100. And if you can feel confident to do that all in one step, that's perfectly fine, as long as you get the right answer. Okay. Then, that's how you'd work out the uh, relative atomic mass from all the isotopes. Okay. So, since we're using percentage abundance, you use 100% as the... Um, isotope, sum of isotope abundance, but like really, if you wanted to, you could take the absolute values that we took in the very first graph and actually use those values, that 84 at the beginning, um, but don't use the percentages. Make sure you use the correct value for the isotope mass. Okay, so in the, that question, um, we use the mass number, but you don't always use the mass number. You actually sometimes are given the actual relative atomic mass, and so therefore you have to use that, All right? And you can also work out the percentage abundance from the RAM, which means that you're just effectively doing this calculation backwards. Okay, so you, instead of solving for RAM, you're given the RAM and you have to work out the isotope abundance for, of it. All right, how do you do that? Let's have a look. Here's a question here. 
there's an RAM of 11.5, there's uh, some amount of 10, some amount of 12, and um, we know that uh, 14 is a 16% of it, all right? So a couple of concepts first, all right? We should know that the total of these particular um, isotopic abundances should equal 100%. That makes sense because, you know, it's a percentage. So what that effectively is saying then is that the RAM is equal to some uh, now that also that that logic there means that these two have to equal what uh, eighty four percent because eighty four is the remainder after sixteen percent here has taken been taken away from the one hundred okay so those two must be equal to eighty four so when we do this calculation we know that okay there's the sixteen percent times the fourteen that's the one that we do know then the other two is going to be something times 12 plus something times uh, 10. Okay, all over 100. Now those two somethings we know have to add up, these two here have to add up to, have to add up to 84%. So if we say that one is X, we can say that the other one is 84 subtract X. Okay, 84 take x. And so this is why, this is the only reason why you learned how to expand all of those things in uh, your previous years in maths, is to do this calculation. So what you're doing, you're doing 16 times 14, which is, 16 times 14 is 224, plus, and then this is 12x, because x times 12 is 12x. And then this one here, you have to multiply everything inside the brackets by everything outside the brackets. Okay, so effectively it's 840. Subtract, because there is that negative value there. Subtract, 10x. All over 100 is equal to 11.5. Okay, so algebra time. Uh, that makes this one, uh, this side is 11.5 times the 100, which happens to be 1150. Okay, uh, there is a 224 and a 840. So 224 plus 840 is 1064. And then there's a positive 12 and a negative 10x positive 12x and negative 10x, which means that it's a plus 2x, okay? So plus 2x. So therefore, then we can bring this uh, 1064 across, so we do the uh, 1150 subtract 0, uh, 1064, which makes that 86, okay? And that's equal to 2x, okay? And so therefore, x is equal to half of that, which happens to be 43%. Okay, so therefore, then we go back and we say, okay, well, that makes, if X is 43% and X was related to the 12, then the 12 has to be 43%. And if the 84 um, has to be comprised of the 43% and something else, so that's 84 take away 43, and that's then 41%. Okay. So that's how you would work out the percentage abundance of a um, couple of isotopes from the RAM. Okay, that's it. Uh, see you till next time. Adios.